It's been a few months since Lama 2 has been out, which is an eternity in language models. But there are still a lot of questions around how the tokenizer works and how to set up the padding for the tokenizer. So I'm going to go through a few of the basics here. There's a GitHub repo that's public under Trellis Research. It's called Lama 2 Setup. I'll put a link below. And there's a free collab notebook that also allows you to explore the Lama 2 tokenizer. So let's get started. Lama's tokenizer has got 32,000 tokens. Uh, some represent words, some represent short words. And there are some special tokens. There's a beginning of sequence token, which is S. There's an end of sequence, uh, forward slash S. These indicate the very start of a sequence going to the language model and the very end. There's no masking token. There's no padding token. I'll talk about those a little later. And there is an unknown token, which represents tokens that are not in the vocabulary. That's unk, U-N-K. So if you're going to fine tune Llama, the very first thing you might need to do is set a padding token uh, because there isn't one. The padding token allows you to pad sequences. So if you have a sequence that's If you don't want to spend too much time, you can just quickly read through here how to add a pad or a mass token if you know what you're looking for. I've also given a guide here on the prompt format, so you can just grab that from GitHub. But if you want to stay, I can go through the notebook that will describe in detail how the tokenizer works and how some of this padding functionality works too. I'm here in the Collab Notebook. Uh, so we'll get started. You can run it on a free collab notebook. First off, connect to Hugging Face. We want to access Meta Lama's Lama 2 model. It is gated, so you need to request access and then make sure that you're logged in. I recommend connecting Google Drive. This means that the model will be downloaded to your Google Drive, and it saves you time next time around because you won't have to re-download. After that, you can install the packages needed, and then we're going to load Lama. We load it in quantized form, which allows us to fit it in a free collab notebook and will also speed up the inference. Now let's move to the purpose of this little demo, which is to talk about the, the tokenizer. So we've loaded here the tokenizer and we're going to check uh, the BOS and the EOS tokens. So that's begin of sequence and end of sequence token. Now let's see what happens when we tokenize. So we'll take a sentence, hello world, and we're going to tokenize this sentence. So let's just run that cell. And hello world gets split into four tokens. So hello, then a comma, and then world, and then an exclamation mark. So these are the token numbers for hello world. Now you might notice here, we've, add, we've set add special tokens to false. Uh, so this means that when we tokenize, we're not automatically adding a beginning or end of sequence token. So let's now set that to true and see what happens. And you'll see there are now six tokens, sorry, five tokens. There's also the beginning of sequence token, which is S. And the beginning of sequence token has got an ID of one. Actually, the end of sequence token has an ID of two. Um, so you can see that if you add special tokens, set that to true, it will automatically add uh, a beginning of sequence token to your data. And this is often done by the trainer so it's automated when you're doing fine tuning on most scripts. But if you were manually building a training script, you would want to uh, click, uh, you'd want to set add special tokens to true because it's useful to tell the language model that you're beginning a sequence and then you're ending. Now notice that it doesn't automatically put in the end uh, token. So if you wanted to have some data with an end token, you'd have to add that manually just like here. So hello world. Then you can add an end token here. Let's run this sequence. Notice that again, I've said add special tokens is true. So you can see we have six tokens now. And you can see indeed the end of sequence token is number two in the Lama tokenizer. Now moving on to pad tokens. This is relevant if you're fine tuning or training a model. It's usually relevant because you have uh, batches of data and each batch might be a certain length, say a thousand long. And not every line, every row of your data might be quite that long. So you want to pad it. 
And usually for that, you use a pad token, but since there is no pad token, you have to define one for Llama. Let's just uh, click here to check that there's no pad token. There's also no mask token and there is an unknown token. So one option is you can set the pad token to the end of sequence token. And uh, this is common to do. It is a bit confusing though, because now you're using the end of sequence token for two purposes. It may not cause issues because the trainer may um, properly handle that, but I think it is a bit confusing. So I don't recommend using the end of sequence token. You could alternatively use the unknown token. Um, again, it might cause a bit of confusion with actual unknown tokens. Um, so here I'll show you how to define a new pad token. So we're going to define a new pad token as pad. And we'll check that it's not already in the vocabulary. And if it's not, we're going to add the pad token to the tokenizer vocabulary. Now further, because the model expects 32,000 uh, vocab size, you need to add it to, uh, you need to add one to the, to the model's vocabulary. And this here is resizing the token embeddings so that it's now going to be the length of the tokenizer, which is updated to include the pad token. Also, we need to update the model. So we've updated the tokenizer to have the pad token, but the model needs to also know about the pad token. So we've done that here. And here I'm just checking that indeed we've set the model and the pad token, uh, the model and tokenizer pad token to be the same. So let's just run this cell. And you can see here, the tokenizer has been given an ID of 32,000. Um, that's because zero is the very first number. So without adding a new token, there would have been 29,999, but now there um, is a token with number 32,000. So actually there's 32,001 uh, vocab size for the tokenizer and for the model right now. And you can see the model pad tokens correct and the model uh, config pad token ID is uh, correct as well. In fact, I've just printed out the same thing twice there. No need for that. So let's do this. Okay. Um, so one other thing to mention is you can do this as well for the mask token. That's getting more advanced. Mask tokens are used if you want to, um, if you want to ignore certain tokens during the training. So for example, if you wanted to ignore all of the first five tokens, uh, because maybe your question is in the first five tokens and you just want to focus on training based on performance for everything after the first five tokens, you can use what's called a loss mask to focus just on those last tokens. And that's something that's done in the training for structured responses. If you want to train a model for a function calling, for example, and you can find the video on that. You also might want to use masking if you don't want certain tokens to pay attention to other tokens. So if you're trying to predict the next token at the end of a paragraph, but you don't want it to pay attention to uh, something that's before for some reason, um, then you might use what's called an attention mask. So it's definitely more advanced, but you can easily set a mask token just by doing the exact same thing. In fact, I've written it out here and just define a mask token. Now, if you run this cell, it's going to add another token. So that's why you can see it's got the ID 32,001. And that means there's actually 32,002 tokens because zero is also a token. Uh, just a small note in here uh, around the padding side. By default, tokenizers typically will add padding to the left-hand side if you're tokenizing a batch. Um, However, it can be useful to tokenize to the right. That means that your actual tokens will always be at the very start of the sequence. It's maybe a bit more intuitive and maybe it avoids some issues as well. It means the model won't see any sequences that start with pad tokens. In principle, that should not be an issue, but I think models are used to seeing tokens at the very start. So it can be maybe beneficial or easier to understand by padding uh, and putting the padding on the right-hand side. Um, now, last off, I'll just show, talk a little bit about the prompt format. Uh, Llama uses a fairly unique prompt format. It's not like OpenAI. There's a specific, um, it's actually not a token, but there's a specific um, code that's used for the beginning of an instruction and the end, and also for the beginning of a system message and the end. I'll just show you here. 
So right at the start of the system message, you have sys, and at the end, you've got forward slash sys, sys between two um, angular brackets. And then at the start of each instruction, you've got inst, and at the end, you've got forward slash inst. Now, this is not intuitive, but these are not tokens in the vocab. Uh, so you won't find inst as a token in the vocab. In fact, inst is often tokenized sometimes as two tokens, and there are cases where slash inst might even be three tokens. So these are not tokens, but the model is tuned to expect these, let's call them mini sequences to indicate the start of a system message or the start of an instruction. And this is the construction of the, of the prompt. You have the beginning of the instruction, then you have your system message, which is wrapped in the beginning and end of system message. Then you have your user prompt, and then you have the end of the instruction. Uh, so let's just run that here to see an example. So we have that beginning of sequence token, which is the S. And then we have the beginning of the instruction, beginning of the system message, the system message, the end of the system message, the user message, and then the end of the instruction message. And that's followed then by the assistance message. Now I've uh, limited the max new tokens to 25, uh, just for a demonstration purpose. If you make it something longer then it's going to generate a longer assistant response. Let's see what it comes up with here. Lama is quite verbose, so it's using up all of the all of the tokens. Okay, and then just so you see, if you have a multi-turn conversation, so we have, let's say, a user prompt howdy, and the assistant response is howdy there. It's a pleasure to meet you. And then the user response is, what's the largest solar system in the universe? Let's just make that 50 as well. Notice here how we have um, the very same thing. The system message is wrapped within the first instruction. And then we have uh, the start of the second turn. So we have the assistant response. And then we again have the user response. But the user input this time does not contain the system message. You only put the system message in the very first uh, system, in the very first user input. Let's just run that to see what it looks like. So you can see again the system message here, then howdy, then we have the first message, and we have the first response after the forward slash ins. That's the end of the instruction. Then we have the user second message asking about the largest solar system. And then we have uh, the generated response, which is the assistant second response here. And you can see it's again giving a fairly verbose answer in that case. Now, I think it's instructive if I increase this um, amount of tokens just to see the full response of um, Lama. What I want to show you is that we should see an end of sequence token appear. Let's see what happens. It's not even answering the question very well, I guess. Lama 7B is not too strong. Yeah, wow, okay, it is giving, it is giving a reasonable answer. But um, let's just ask it to respond very briefly. See if that might help. So indeed here in this case, the assistant has finished its response and it's appended a slash S, which indicates the end of the response. And what that allows you to do is uh, to stop calling the model to gen predict the next token, because when you see that end of response, that's the whole point of the end response token. It allows you to know uh, to stop searching for the next token. And that now to come full circle explains why it's useful to have beginning and end of sequence tokens because it's a way to train the model to say, okay, my sequence is finished. I'm finished with this response and there's no need to ask me to return the next predicted token. As I said, the GitHub is public. You can check it out at Trellis Research. You can post any questions there. There is of course the Meta Llama original repo. You can find that on GitHub as well. And you might find it useful to run through this brief tutorial uh, explaining prompt format and the tokenizer format.
Cheers.